The Female Brain by Luann Brazendine. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps with ranking and SEO and all this other stuff, and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. So I want to say that this book is not as biased as I was worried it might be. This is backed by science, and it does not focus all that much, if you give it a chance, on the differences between the two sexes. I mean, it's called the female brain, so it keeps a little bit more con concentration on the female side of things. And, the and so the book is like this very lovely, sassy walk in the psychological park that is a woman's life from start to finish. It focuses on what a woman does and does not want from birth to death. It's a very unique concept to the type of books that I u I'm used to reviewing on this channel. And the menstrual cycle in particular is a very interesting concept. When you look at it from the perspective, I mean, weeks is one thing, but when there are like estrogen waves and how they affect the girl's behavior, are women really that emotional on their periods? When? And why? And why do girls like to go to the bathroom together? But why don't men? Not that I'm complaining about guys not going to the bathroom together, but why are girls so impulsive during their teen years? Why are they so difficult to raise? around that age. Why is the depression rate also so high at that age? A lot of things girls on average seem to do better than men. It seems like men do tend to catch up over time. And I'm willing to bet it has something to do with the amount of time we spend around women nowadays, which in my opinion is a very good thing. Like humans were always emotional creatures, but now that now that the emotions are kind of balancing out, there's like this even energy field that seems to produce better, more efficient economic results and other results, of course. It's not like the economy is the only thing that matters. Then before, uh, of course, maybe that's also a generalization. But the author does talk a little about the end in the epilogue, like the future of like women and stuff like that. That's some problems that women are having nowadays that I don't think have anything to do empirically or like primarily with patriarchy, feminism, sexism, or anything like that. I mean, maybe it does. I'm, I could be wrong. I don't know that much about this stuff. But the things I've heard are not really that much at all, like the things that the author talks about in the end. Like boys are literally, we are literally like autistic when we're babies. And when we're teenagers, we're less emotional, but girls are just obsessive about how they look. And again, I know there are like generalizations, but like we're not looking at the outliers. We're not looking at like the tomboys and all the other stuff of like statistics. If you're a guy and you're watching this, I can't believe I'm saying this in the middle of the video. You probably know the struggle of like hiding a boner in the middle of every single period during middle school. When I look at all the people I met and her of and everything out throughout my life, I think these things make sense. They are pretty believable. And by the way, I don't think that's confirmation bias speaking because there were plenty of things I didn't know. There were so many like how low, how when love is lost, abandoned men are three to four times more likely to commit suicide or how rejection actually triggers the same circuitry as physical pain. I'm just saying all this so whether you're male or a female or you may look at it the same way considering your knowledge of all these things on average. By the way, I also don't think the book is saying, oh, this is all the way it should be. This is the biology of females and it's flawed or anything like that. Like I felt more educated than anything else in the end and maybe that's a mindset thing. But I like making these videos to get people kind of approaching books with more stabilized, healthy mindsets for themselves. The chapter about sex is very... It's arousing, not gonna lie. I'm just kidding. I found it more interesting, more scientific than anything else. By the way, there is no difference between vaginal and clitoral orgasm. Boys and girls, except one is more of a physiological thing and another one is more of a psychological thing. But they are simply two different sides of the same coin, linked to the same part of the brain. And they are connected to each other, if I recall correctly. After listening to the book, since my girlfriend is like in love with babies, I knew she would come up in this review, that having a baby will change her brain brain chemistry, like forever, like in irreversible ways. Like you will never be the same person again. And this isn't me saying it, it's decades of research. Ask your mom, ask anyone who was given birth. Breastfeeding is apparently very painful, or at least it could be for the first week or two. But after four, it becomes downright pleasurable. I did find myself throughout the book kind of looking at like potential problems and wondering what the solutions are. Like how sex drops like below number 10 on a woman's priority list after she has a baby. Now I'm not saying that's bad because I'm a guy. I'm saying it's bad because that can be good for the relationship, right? If both of them are working hard, but one of them feels like their emotional needs aren't really being met. Meanwhile, the woman's emotional needs are, you know, taking care of the children and not have sex like they, they were 
10 years beforehand, but men usually have between 10 and 100 times as much testosterone as women do. So you can kind of see the friction this could cause. And that's literally just one of so many different examples. Quotes. Her brain is unfolding ancient instructions on how to be a woman. When closeness is threatened, the brain sounds the abandonment alarm loudly. Men are chasers and women are choosers. For her, nine months of pregnancy followed by caring for an infant under stressful conditions makes less sense than the quick deposit of sperm does for him. Direction 1. This came off to me as an excellent book in psychology, female psychology particularly, so if you're interested in female psychology, obviously check it out. But if you're just a girl, something I really like about books like this one, or at least psych books, is that I always learn something new and interesting about myself. And if you get this book, you will most likely learn interesting, important things to look out for that, who knows, you maybe didn't even notice in other people in the first place. Direction 2. If you like this book, Definitely check out, especially if you're a guy, or just anyone interested in girls, Why Women Have Sex, and The Evolution of Desire, both by Dr. David Buss. That dude is a spectacular psychologist. Few of his studies are actually talked about in The Female Brain. The Female Brain by Luan Brzezendine. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews, that, and all the other books that I mentioned in this video as well if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I'll see you then.